Hey everybody, it's Eric Torenberg, co-founder, partner of Village Global, a network-driven venture firm. And this is Venture Stories, a podcast covering topics relating to tech and business with world-leading experts. Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Venture Stories by Village Global. I am into community service lately, and so today I'm joined by two creators behind Krizam, uh, Shiva Kilaru and Ben Burke. Thank you. Krizam is a YouTube channel that parodies the tech industry. They recently had a video about Twitch streamers go relatively viral and hit the top of Reddit. Why don't you guys introduce us to how Krizam got started? Like, what, What's the story behind the story? Everyone's dying to know. Yeah, so me and Shiva, we go way back, uh, back to the early, the turn of the decade, we had a lot of kind of the same opinions about stuff like, isn't it crazy that, you know, you used to, uh, call people on the phone and now everybody's just texting. And, um, uh, isn't it crazy how, you know, these days it's all about Pokemon, you know, what have whatever happened to dad and mom and just things like that. And that, that was really the foundation of our friendship. And that's been, you know, the past, I guess, 10 years now. Um, almost immediately we're like, how do we share this with as many people as possible? How do we get our message out there? You know, we're kind of like the foil to the Silicon Valley lifestyle. Yeah. And I think people are starting to wake up to the importance of our message. And yeah. I mean, that, that's what we're here for. I think the market is wide open and we're taking a bite and we're here for that pie. And it's just getting bigger every day. Okay, so what happens during the creative process of making a new Krizam video? Like, take us behind the curtains. Like, how. Does it happen? Yeah, so we actually started out with a three-point framework of developing a new video, and, and number one in, in that framework is just, it's gotta have technology in it. Uh, Absolutely. Number two, technology's gotta be bad, and that served us pretty well for the first six videos we made, um, but we actually noticed we weren't getting any views on anything we were making, and that's when we realized it was, it was so obvious. We were missing the fourth point in our framework. The, we were missing number four, and, and, and number four, of course, ended up being it's got to be good. Make the stuff good. Only make it's it gotta pop. Good. It's got to slap. Uh, beyond that, it takes months of really focused effort. Like, like Shiva said, meditating on those three creative process points. Um, sometimes it takes weeks, months. Um, I go to a lot of saunas, hot houses at the time, try to just embody what it's what it's like. You know, I, what I like to just close my eyes, imagine myself as a caveman back before any of this whole crazy tech world came to be. And what was that like? And then I open my eyes and I look around and see the world around me and I say, I'm not hunting for rabbits anymore. I'm sending Snapchats to people. What's the deal with that? And sometimes that little nugget of insight can, it can be anything. It could be a a tweet. Uh, It can turn into maybe a Facebook post that my mom shares. And really those best nuggets, those are what make it into those Kazam videos. And so far I've had 10 of those. And I, Shiva, I think you've had zero of those. That's accurate. Yeah. So that four point framework has really been the foundation for all the success we've had. Uh, it's just, you know, you know, trust the framework, trust the process, everything else takes care of itself. Yeah, anybody can make a sketch, but what we really did, our key insight was how can we productize and make a mechanism for making hits and a scalable platform. A scalable, scalable platform. platform. Thank you. And you've mentioned trust the process. Uh, and of course, that was popularized by the 76ers and the NBA. I mean, would you say that there are parallels between running a relatively successful YouTube channel and a moderately successful NBA franchise? What? I'd say no. basketball is absolutely irrelevant to everything we do. I, I, don't, I don't see how basketball is related to this at all. Me personally, I'm not a basketball fan, and I didn't come on here to talk about basketball with you, Eric. And I know we're friendly outside of this bullshit, but like, please, this is a professional podcast. Yeah, we're here to talk about our YouTube channel, so if you can stay on topic, that would really... Yeah, sorry, I'll, I'll try to make it more relevant, appropriate. I mean... I mean, I gotta say, one of my favorite videos is the, is the we made a commercial video, um, you know, one minute video where you have this sort of vague or you know, like make fun of this sort of like, I don't know. Why don't you describe what you're trying to do in we made a commercial video? Yeah, we made a commercial is one of those classic Krasan videos, which uh, we started out with an idea of what we wanted to make, and then we started filming, and we were like, this idea is really bad. <laughs> Let's do a t- totally different idea. Let's just make it up on the spot and figure it out in post, which is what Shiva does. <laughs> Uh, so we made a commercial as one was exactly that. We were just trying to make a whole different sketch. It wasn't really working. So what we pivoted into was just a young millennial guy. He's dancing in front of the Salesforce tower. He's having a good time. Just trying to encapsulate the branded message of Salesforce in a relatable, cool way. And uh, that's been something that's really resonated with, with, with a few people very strongly. I think a few people really understand 
I don't know if this has made its way to, to Mark Benioff yet. Mark, you know, if, if you're out there, you're if you're listening, to I know this, you've seen it. Go ahead and click not, on YouTube, Krasam. I know you're just using us for free publicity. Just, Tell us just what you pay think. us, man. Just, I know you want to use this for the Super Bowl in 2020. Just ask us. It's okay. Ask us. The uh, but what really uh, took off for you guys was uh, was the hustle. Um, two minute video, sort of making fun of uh, the Silicon Valley, um, you know, hustle lifestyle. Talk about what you were what you were trying to to do there. You know, a lot of people uh, don't realize that's actually a documentary of Ben's life. <laughs> On an average day, he's not talking to anyone, and he is uh, writing in his journal three times a day. Absolutely. Eating a salad for lunch and, and going home. And having very little social contact. Yeah. <laughs> we put it down, we put it on Reddit, and I thought people would blow it because of how good my life is, but it turns out a lot of people just thought it was very funny. Um, and that was kind of, and I think that was another kind of defining moment for Krasam, where we kind of pivoted it a little bit. And yeah, let's just make fun of Ben Burke. When you look at our sketches through that lens, I think I think things come to focus a lot more. When uh, when I heard the um, the character say, uh, you know, reading meditations didn't understand shit, I felt that someone had seen into my soul for, for the first time in a Thank long you. time. Absolutely. I mean, you know, I'm I'm riding bar to work. I see people with meditations. You know, they're looking at it. I see sapiens, furrowed brows, <laughs> sweat dripping down. I see the Tol- Tolstoy novels on no there. No one's understanding. No shit. one is understanding Tolstoy. People are tweeting quotes, not understanding shit. It's okay. It's okay to admit that you don't understand shit. That's kind of, I'd say our mission statement. Almost. Yeah, and speaking of not understanding shit, let's pivot to macro, which is the most popular video by far, 645,000 views. Also the most niche uh, where you guys uh, imitate uh, an esports sort of commentator, maybe a player, uh, as, but as if Excel was an esport and this was a, was a pro player. Uh, talk about what you were trying to do there and you know, what, what, what that reception has been like. Yeah, Macro was another one of those videos where people think that we have some great idea, but really it's just a, a facet of Ben Burr's personality that we're kind of just putting out there for people to, to lampoon and, and ridicule. And a lot of people think, oh, it's ridiculous that someone would talk about the Microsoft Office patch notes, but this is something that Ben Burr does in his everyday life. This video, I mean, we didn't write a script for this. We, it was literally just him impassioned talking about how much he's quite enraged by the updates Microsoft has been making to Excel, and, and people thought it was a joke, but that's Ben Burke. It's true. So I mean, let, let's zoom out here, guys. Let, let's talk about, you know, one thing we've been talking a lot on the podcast lately is, is mental models and how people out there just building their lattice of mental models, really building out different frameworks, they apply to different situations. How do you guys approach this? Um, when you're, when you're making YouTube videos, you know, you start with one mental model and you, then you say, well, is that the only mental model that I can have? You say, no, well, what about this other mental model? And then you say, well, what's the connection between those two? Suddenly that's a two, that's a two, that's a mental model, mental model connect dot, you know? And then what happens after that? You get a third one going. Before you know it, you have this interconnected, almost sort of spiderweb <laughs> relationship of the ideas in your brain. Comedy is flowing. And it's something me and Shiva talk about all the time. Uh, you know, we'll just go back and forth. We'll just start running down, you know, mental models like new flavors of ice cream. Uh, the keto diet. Um... Reaganomics. <laughs> I mean, but just getting back to basics here, Ben. I mean, how do you see Austrian economics? Thank you. This is something I get asked a lot. I think it's I think it's really under understated how important it is for YouTube creators to understand, you know, modern fiscal economic policy. I think it's something that too often goes unsaid in the in the content creator space. I mean, Austrian economics, you know, modern monetary theory. Um, you know, Laffer curves. I mean, all of these things are important concepts for the modern content creator to understand. And I've, I've gone around, I've, I've said this to a lot of people, and I say, don't you know anything about supply-demand curves? And too often I'm laughed out of, you know, content creator spaces, and, and I think it's a travesty because there's a, there's so much out there to know. Yeah. I mean, to that end, I mean, how has... Uh, crypto, you know, affected your, your lives. Yeah, the blockchain is something that we're really excited about too. Uh, I can't say that we've done our homework on it. Um, Just haven't done our homework. Yeah, it's <laughs> it's no doubt a fascinating advancement in technology. Yeah, and you know, I want to ask you guys another personal question. You know, I'm, I'm fairly new in the, in the investing world. I think about things like portfolio construction. I think about ownership. I'm thinking about just you know taking my game to the next level. How do you think I should be thinking about some of these fundamental? Questions. 
Yeah, again, this is something that we get asked a lot. And the answer I find when I think about my own investment philosophy, I just say, you know, I got I to gotta do me. Um, <laughs> and what that means is uh, I think a lot of people, they like to, uh, you know, run a lot of numbers by me and they like to, I don't know, give me a lot of these forms and disclosures and, and figures and things like that. And what I do is I they could try to come at me with that stuff. I look them right in the eye and I say, what are we doing? And in that moment, I don't even need to wait for them to answer. I know what the answer is. And I turn around immediately. I hand them hundred thousand dollars and I say, go forth. And so that's what I think that it's not about. It's not about the numbers at the end of the day. It's about changing the world. And it's about Economics the new way. Economics the you way. Did you want to add to that, Shiva? You're, you're not... Um, you know, first thing I would say is... It's not as successful as investor as I am. I mean, while we're on the subject, I, I do have to say that... Um, you know, I've known you guys for a long time, and I've always you know, felt good rapport. I felt like I could trust you guys. You know, you guys be there for me, but... Ever since Macro got 600,000 views, I happen to get the same vibe for you guys lately. And I was going to bring this up later at dinner, but I thought that the podcast would be good because listeners got to hear it. Like, what's been going on? Like, why, why do you sort of you know think that maybe you're bigger than you are? Like, what, what's changed for you guys? Because okay. okay. it's different. Okay. It's yeah. different. Yeah. There's well, difference. Let me just say one thing, Eric, is, is that we were expecting a more professional environment on this podcast and... and but I, you just, you've disappointed us yet again. I, I get it. I mean, you're out there. You know, you need your views. You need your clicks. So I get it. You're trying to stir up the pot. I know that on Twitter tomorrow, there's just going to be people saying, like, Eric Tornberg, got him. Takes shots at Krizan. <laughs> got him. And, you know, we're used to this. I'm there's a lot it. of haters and losers out there that are trying to bring us down. You know. At the end of the day, yeah, so what? We're big. We blew up. Yeah. Maybe you should succeed and then talk to us. Talk to us. Our email is open, krizam.krizam at gmail.com. If you feel like you're not getting the respect you deserve, we'll tell you why. And and the last thing I would say is that, you know, we see you out there on Twitter every so often talking about nonviolent communication. Like, look at me. I'm Eric Tornberg. I'm the, and I'm the NVC guy. And How about some violent communication for you, Eric? And and to see you adopt this, like, petty tactic. How do you like this now? Yeah. I, I, you know, I think your listeners are going to be surprised, but, you know, we're not. We know you. Yeah. We know where you came from. Anyway, does that answer your question? Yeah, I, Eric. Um, let, let me close with with, with just some uh, some thoughts. I mean, so you guys have reached a level of success. Now, I'm, I, I guess I watch you guys do this for for a few years. I am truly impressed because you rarely see someone take. I, I don't assume a project is actually real until someone's working on it. I've been telling you guys to quit your jobs for years. <laughs> um, you didn't. As you've you know gone on to make your names for yourselves, how do you think that? I have inspired you on that path? That's a great question. Uh, the toughest thing about sketch comedy, personally, I think, is, is just dealing with failure. I think because I met you, and I met you when I did, when you were just an abject failure, you were working on Rap FM in Michigan, and that was really inspiring. I mean, like, this guy, clearly misguided, clearly working on an idea that will never take off. I remember my dad pulled me aside, and he's like, why are you working with that man on the rap site? He's a total failure. And I said, look, I know, let him have his fun. And now look at you. I mean, you're in San Francisco. You're running a podcast, and I think that what else? What else can you really ask for? So, being able to stomach failure is something that we really have yeah. learned from you. It's really interesting. A lot of people say, you know, success is important, but I think what a lot of people don't realize is that a, one of the things about being successful is that you gotta take risks and you gotta fail. Uh, that's something that we uniquely have been able to understand and capitalize on. And it's okay if you're a loser. More simply, <laughs> how do you guys? very seriously uh, process the relatively little success you've had. Um, okay. how, how, how do you make sense of it? And uh, how you guys are proud of yourselves? I mean, how, how do you guys, how do you guys think about it? Well, you know, success isn't always measured in, you know, likes and views, you know, sometimes it's measured in, you know, I've been making YouTube videos with my buddy for two years now. What's better than that? Yeah. And I'd say to all the listeners out there, if you think you can do it better than us, then you do it. If you think our videos are trash, you do it then. You do it. Set up a Patreon. I'll give you two bucks a month. <laughs> but please, do it yourself. You think Don't so make fun funny, of us. Huh? Yeah, please please stop making fun of us. It actually, <laughs> you can't handle it. I think that's a good note to close on. Thank you guys so much for coming on the podcast and, and doing the work you do. It's really an honor.
Thank you. We know it is. Yeah. For all the listeners out there, you can find our content at youtube.com slash Krazam or at krazam.tv. That's K-R-A-Z-A-M dot TV. Smash that subscribe button. Get us to 10,000. And uh, thanks for having us, Eric. Leave us a nice message. Leave us a nice message. You know, send us your thoughts about Austrian economics, blockchain, fantasy football. <laughs> totally. Uh, thanks, guys. Um, that was great. Uh, are you guys going to Venmo me that $10,000, sir, if you're coming on? We'll, t- we'll talk about it. We'll, talk, talk. we'll take it offline. Okay, sounds good. <laughs>If you're an early stage entrepreneur, we'd love to hear from you. Please hit us up at villageglobal.vc slash network catalyst.